part. Flower part. Headline part. <clears throat> so, let's talk bags. It is Friday, March 26th, and we are three months, a little over three months, into our move, and we just got our household goods last week. Right, Remy? Yeah. We just got our household goods last week, so we thought it'd be a great idea in the middle of unpacking to record a video of what we packed to survive for three months while we were here in Okinawa. I'll have a detailed description of everything below, so you can just reference that. You don't have to watch the whole video if you don't want to. But if you want to watch the video in my boxes behind me, because we're still unpacking, uh, let's do this. This video will be made up of three parts. Part one is going to be what we checked. Part two is going to be what we brought with us on the airplane. And part three is going to be kind of lessons learned and everything. Part one, checked bags. We took a total of nine bags. We had three big bags, which consisted of a toy slash kind of utility bag. The toy or utility bag that we, that we packed. Uh, one thing that is very useful, and we especially used it a lot whenever we were at our house without the hotel or you know all we had was a temple and furniture we got this little kit that we made that's kind of like our entertainment kit and it consists of a projector a um, apple tv and our nintendo switch and a home pod really all you need is a video source a streaming device and a speaker the reason why we like our setup is, you know, with the Apple TV, you could do the Apple Fitness, and that was something we could do to exercise while we were inside of our room. School bag, we just enrolled the kids in the school, so from January until two weeks prior, uh, we had this gap that we wanted to make sure the kids were, were schooled up. And then linen bag, like our bedding. The linen bag was actually more useful than I thought it would be. I was thinking I'm going to be at a hotel, I'm not going to use linens. Ashley wanted to bring the linens and it was a really good idea as always because once we got into our house, we didn't have anything. All you have is like temp loan furniture so you need to have your linens with you. If not, you can always buy them on island but we didn't want to spend extra money. That's the three big bags that we checked in and then we each had one personal suitcase. My personal suitcase that I checked in was my uniforms for work. Uh, all of that that I needed to do my job was in one bag. I knew where it was at and that made it easy for me. Get, get. Ashley's bag. I'll let her describe what she brought in her bag and she will have a better understanding of what went in the three big bags uh, because she did most of the packing on that. So we're talking bags. My first bag, I literally dedicated two giant suitcases to just kids entertainment. They were just stuffed with things for the kids to do and it worked and I have no regrets and I would do it the exact same way. I also added in a Instant Pot in there. The Instant Pot had the spices in it. I like put it all in there along with a knife. So the one suitcase that was packed with toys had Lego kits, the big Lego kits that would take a day or two of um, time alone building it and then time playing with it. We also did kits, like craft kits that included wood, but then they turned it into a toy. I do suggest the Osmo kit because they can spend like an hour solid on there and they're having a good time and it's hands-on, but they're also learning. Our kids are six and eight, so I don't really know for small, smaller munchkins, but for that age, I would definitely 
consider packing just suitcases full of activities because it wasn't just the two weeks of quarantine that those toys and activities had to hold them over for. It was also um, an additional like two weeks in the hotel waiting for a car in our house and then once we got into the house it was another extra week until we actually got our express shipment. So all of that I equaled like six weeks I think and it was just the suitcase full of entertainment. The third suitcase was linens, sheets, blankets, comforters, and pillows. And if you vacuum seal, it just sucks it all in there and compresses it down and you are good to go. And then a couple towels and washcloths because this again had to hold us over until our express shipment came. Pet kennels. With the pet kennels, what we had was, well, just make sure that it's the proper dimensions. I thought it was going to be kind of, well, if it's close, you know, they might let you on. That's not the case. They're pretty strict on it. So make sure that you got the right dimensions. The pets can stand up in it. We put a pad in there just for, you know, they, something they could, they could sit on and then uh, like, a, like a pee pad underneath that or actually on top of that. We had cat food taped on the top. Food and water trays were mounted on the inside trash bag with cat litter inside of it only for one night that's all you are going to need and then you could get everything here when you're on island the one night is when we were in the hotel and we just opened up the trash bag and the litter was right there and the cats could go in there and do their thing and then we just bagged it up it was already in the bag and threw it away and then live animal stickers on the side we did not bring zip ties you're going to need zip ties so if you want, you can bring zip ties, but most likely the airliner will have that that they provided for us. So we're not too big of a deal on that one. Part two, what we carried on with us. We each, Ashley and I have our packed backpacks. We love these things, our travel backpacks. Uh, and you know, you bring whatever you want, but I, we brought our travel backpacks. Inside my bag was my clothes, had uh, like my headphones, my AirPods, the, um, like a cord, organizer that I really love. It just keeps everything tight that I need as far as charging, cables, everything. It's a Bellroy uh, cord organizer. A hygiene or dot kit. Just a small little kit. Nothing too big for me. A buff. It's more like a scarf or something like that. It's just a kind of a stretchy material. What I did was that worked out for me because I like to put that over my eyes before COVID and take a nap, but it was cool with that thing because all I had to do was just pull it over my entire face and that covered the mask and the the uh, the face mask and the eye mask so I could get some sleep. Pens, definitely have your pens on you, especially when you're checking into the flight going to Japan. You're going to sign a lot of stuff, so make sure you got your pens on you. Backpacks actually have a fanny pack or purse or whatever you want to call it, satchel. It's the hip strap, so we took that off and we used it as a fanny pack. So in that was like my tickets, I put the pens in there and just that kind of quick grab stuff that you need. Laptop, uh, that all went in the pack. Keyboard, mouse, and paperwork. Um, I will put in the description all the paperwork that they checked for us. All right, so lessons learned, part three. Lessons learned is uh, the pet kennels. That The pets were, it was probably the biggest lesson learned on that whole travel plan because the there are no guides that we could find or at least in our guide that we had that we were given that they do not accept a, a top loading kennel so if your kennel opens up at the top uh, you're gonna need to get a new kennel we were so lucky that they had kennels there that they loaned us but we all but we had to take apart our kennels and bag up all the screws and everything and it was just a huge ordeal Mommy? Yes? Can we have some snacks? We're not going to eat them. That's what Warner said. You want snacks that you're not going to eat? Yeah. What are they for, though? I don't know. Whenever you're doing your health certificate for your pets, make sure that you have a USDA accredited veterinarian sign on the USDA portion of your health certificate. So just look at the health certificate. There's a spot that says USDA accredited vet signature that's what they need to sign because if they don't sign that your pet's quarantine time 
uh, in the States or wherever you're coming from does not count according to the government of Japan and you have to restart your quarantine time. So make sure that your veterinarian, make sure your vet signs on that spot whenever you're getting your health certificate. Big one. Don't stress about it. I guess like that's one thing is it's hard not to, but like you're coming to a country that has plenty of things that you can buy if you forgot something. So, you know, during the crazy process, it's hard to not stress, but you know, if you forget something, you can you can get it out of here. I'd say just bring like essential stuff, like your medication and your like contact lenses and all the stuff that's like an ordeal to get a hold of. That's what I would triple check you have. And a first aid kit. We're getting to the fun part of our adventure out here, so uh, we're gonna start posting kind of the things to do out here uh, after our how-to videos and what we experienced on our travels. So anyways, uh, please, if you have any questions, post them in the comments uh, and we'll be sure to answer that. Cool. Dang.